Yeah, no problem. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that's the most shocking part. I, I thought that was like your favorite part of the tournament. <laughs> We're live. Yeah. I'm watching the stream right now. We're definitely live. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's no sound. Oh, wait. Okay. I have sound, but you don't. So it's your mic. Yeah. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Sorry. Uh, OBS was pointing to the wrong audio device so yay anyway let's do that whole thing again so it never happened <laughs> very sorry guys uh i am welcome to the 2022 summer tournament i'm here with ketrock who has just given an intro as well um thank you for coming in again and welcome to the show um apologies for technical issues it's good that happens right at the start of the tournament and not right at the end so yes um I was just in the middle of explaining how we've gotten rid of our bunnies with tins. Sorry. Also, I've shut my cat out the door, so she's no longer going to interrupt us as well, which everyone will be very disappointed about, I'm sure. But poor thing's ill at the moment, so I've let her sleep. It's okay. That's okay. We might get a dog <laughs> running down the stairs in the background to make up for it. Ah, there we go. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so uh, we've had a fairly long season. Um, I think since March was our last tournament and uh, ProBots has been on a bit of hiatus. So there's been a lot of development in the bot world. Um, you are the current defending champion. Uh, how do you feel your chances are of uh, defending your title? Uh, not good, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm confident my bot will put up a good showing. That's good. <laughs> Maybe I'll put something special together for Eris like usual. Yeah. <laughs> and not run into them, but we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah. So uh, we currently uh, have changed the format, so no more groups. Uh, we are doing a first round Swiss tournament. Every bot will play three times, and then the rankings at the end of those three matches will be used to determine the seedings for the final bracket, which will be a eight uh, eight bot single elimination tournament, um, all the way down to the finish. Uh, I have no idea how this will work. Um, I think it, I think it will work out pretty well. Um, myself and Imfi have done some maths on this, so thank you very much, Imfi, for okay. doing maths. <laughs> I, I did good. actually do some maths before myself, and then Imfi pointed out a slight problem in it, and I've slightly modified the format. I think it's going to work fine. So, um, but yeah, should be good. Looking forward. To Keeping it simple with two people working on math. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never try and do math live on stream as well. So. Yeah. That'll make it interesting, though. I mean, it's it's a different format, so I'll be interested to see how it turns out. Yep. So um, anyway, tonight we have four matches for you. First up is Eris versus Twelve Ball Bot. Number one seed takes the uh, the the uh, joy of opening the show, and then we have Shark Bots up against Spud. Uh, ben bots up against Caninana, and we're going to close it with Sh Sharpened Edge against here. Two of our more seasoned bots coming back. That's going to be good. yeah. That'll be a nice close match. It's yeah. always close between those two. Okay, that's. Uh, should we get to a first game anyway? Let's do it. Let's what do are we it. starting with? It's going to be twelve pool bot versus Eris. Okay, okay. I'm ready I've always go. theorized Eris might be uh, a little weak to early game rushes. All right. Uh, I See, twelve full bot. I'm guessing is an early game rush, despite <laughs> the name. Yeah, I mean, kind of. Uh, you'd expect it. All right, ready when you are. Uh, yeah, good to go. Okay, going in three, two, <clears throat> one, go. Okay, down in the bottom left, it is our number one seed, looking to take back her title. It is Eris. Oh, and I think you've lost sound, Ketrock. 
Okay, and spawning in the top right, we have the blue Zerg at his 12 full bot. My mute button's not very, uh, yeah. not very good. <laughs> Sometimes I press it and nothing happens. Yeah. Um, so I didn't say uh, hatch gas pool, I think was this build out of Eris, which, you know, if there's a build that Ling Rush will do well against, it's got to be that one, right? Sure, but, uh, you know, this is building an extractor, so not quite the uh, straight up 12 pool instant send every zergling rush but uh you know i think we're uh, gonna get there i wasn't looking too closely but he might have built that pool on 12 because it's already complete at yeah. the one minute mark and yeah. the pool hasn't even begun for eris yet we will be going gas before pool as well oh, oh no he lied no, no. <laughs> he's going he's going pool first you know, His build was called Hatch Gas Pool. I uh, I think we should just call that a default victory to the 12 pool bot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> For not living up to its name. <laughs> oh, and here we go. 12 pool bot, however, is living up to his name, and Zerglings are already streaming <laughs> here across we go. the map. Yeah. Uh, this is probably the wrong bot to try this against. Uh, Eris does see it with the Overlord. So. Yep, so it does say versus Ling Rush. I'm not sure. It's not a whole lot of deviation you can do right now. He cannot make drones. Other than that, he's still got to wait on that spawning pool to complete. Yeah. It's getting there, though. I think it will be complete by the time he gets there. Not quite. Yeah. Well, I mean, then he's got to build the queen and spines yeah. and lings. Okay, it looks like, like, like the drones are going to fight. Yeah. And we've forgotten how good drones are versus uh, zerglings when you get to have like, the good drone micro. Yeah, Eris the village of mineral lock and uh... yeah, I I think like more zerglings have been lost. Only one drone has been lost in the eight zerglings for uh, yeah, yeah, the twelve pool bot. And now they're trickling in two at a time, and there's already eight zerglings out of Eris. So yeah, she's not okay, looking one, good for twelve pool bot. One drone goes does go down, but uh... yeah, again moral victory for twelve pool bot. And now there's queens as well. Um, there's not really a lot more development on the side of 12 ball bot either. No, it's just going to be that slow trickle. And the uh, zergling count is already massive for Paris now. Yeah. Taking no chances, not building a single drone, just powering up those queens and zerglings himself. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I don't like uh, 12 ball bot's chances here, unfortunately. No. Tofu bot is actually built as like a practice bot, something to like test your bot up against, but Twelve Pool is really strong and the uh, practice bot is actually capable of making the tournament series just by having a really well done build order. Yeah, and this was in the top sixteen bots, uh, just about. Uh, yeah. But I'm guessing he just made it in because I'm guessing Eris is the number one seed. Yes, Eris is number one. Like, I guess to play the bottom seed. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. quite sure how this format works, but yeah, it's uh, basically it does make sense to me. Against bottom seed here, so yeah, Eris is very much favoured in this matchup. Uh, we will have a lot uh, closer in seeding matches coming up later. Uh, yeah. yeah. And of course, by bottom seed, we're saying, you know, 16 of like. What, six, 60, 70 bots on the ladder? Yeah. So I think it's about <laughs> the bottom seed now, is still so. right near the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's not top 16 out of quite a lot. So, uh, yeah. But Eris was right on top of that pile, of course. Oh, um, the queen might go down here. Yeah, I oh, think so. No, not quite, quite the firepower. <laughs> yeah, just about. Could oh. use a nice little inject on oh, that one. There we go. <laughs> it's got a Moral victories. Yep, yeah, and two creep, fresh creep tumors as well. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's so many zerglings. Yeah. Okay, meanwhile, in the background, Twelve Pool Blood has expanded. He's well behind on drone counts, but. Uh... Oh, actually, no, equal on workers at the moment. I think Twelve Pool Blood's actually ahead on workers, but yeah. I don't oh, think it's right. going to count just... for him. <laughs> but... Of course, as I say, that Eris does go back into droning now. Yeah. So there's tiny hope for 12 pool bot if like Eris just does an A move across the map and win right now. <laughs> yeah. He sits back and lets uh, 12 pool bot drone up. Yeah, I think Eris. But as I say that, uh, he's actually lying behind on worker counts here. Just play a bit. Um, yeah. There's not much 
Yeah, twelve four bot is not going to have anything in production apart from zerglings at this point. Yeah, sixty one zerglings to ten. <laughs> Does he get another queen? Yeah. But this is more or less a question of when will Eris uh, move out, because that is when the game is going to end. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to uh, throw this up a bit, or? Yeah, we'll let it play out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm guessing the next two games might be similar. For those ones, we can maybe speed it up a bit. For this one, we'll yeah, keep the suspense keep of yeah. when will the attack happen. <laughs> he first guessing Eris. It's like... I, and, you know, to be fair to Eris, you know, it's the, the spots made it all the way to the tournament. It would be uh, a shame to see it go out so quickly. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure this bot wins in its first punch, right? If it doesn't yeah. win that first punch, then the trickling yeah. of two Zerglings at a time is likely not going to be enough. Yeah. Unless it did devastating damage in the first attack. Yeah. Funny how these Zerglings just sit back and watch the Queens die. <laughs> Uh, Eris is not perfect by a long shot, because uh, certainly on this defense, but doing pretty well. Eris trying to take a fourth base, and maybe. Oh, actually letting his Zerglings get picked away at. Yeah. <laughs> okay, with Eris trying to expand again, maybe it is time to speed this up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not sure if Eris is going to actually do the kill move anytime soon. Oh, here we go. She's moving out. No, she's going back. No, I think he's trying to protect the expanding right, drone. Let's, let's go and uh, yeah. speed this up because, yeah, this is uh, 108 supply down to 45. And there we go. Yeah, maybe if you want to snipe Eris, this is the play, right? Make him think that he's getting 12 tools and then just drone behind it because yeah. Eris <laughs> doesn't seem like he tries to push his uh, link advantage. Uh, it's massive. There we go, finally at uh, 9 minutes. 10 minutes. Is he going to move out? Oh, finally we see some uh, attack on the other side. After 10 and a half minutes. <laughs> Eris is not a bot that likes to win fast. There we go. GG. So each of these series are going to be a best of three? Is that yes, correct? Yes, best of three is okay. in the first round. So let's uh, load up the second map. Um... Was there an issue with the stream? Oh. See down 10% of the screen. Oh, that's weird. No, it's not playing oh. on my monitor, Cam Cringies. Was it just that it was uh, not showing? So part of the minimap was cut off? Oh, uh, yeah. So you need to resize that window. It's uh, uh... Sorry, guys. That's okay. It wasn't a, uh, a game where you really need to be paying attention to the minimap too closely. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, I think it. Yeah, I think it just got resized up a lot. So, apologies. Live editing on stream, but uh... yeah, just make it too small, and then fit it in, and then resize it to the full screen. Yeah, that should work. Okay, I think we're. I think we're good. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, right, I'm good to go when you are on the second map. Um, am I in? I'm in. Yep. I'm back up to the start. Okay, I'm good to go. All right, going in three, two, one, go. All right. In the top left, up one to zero, it is Eris. In the top right, we have the 12 pool king. It is 12 pool bot. Yep. Doesn't even send out the first overlord. He's like, no, no. no. <laughs> No need. This isn't going to be a game where Overlord scouting is a thing. Save the APM. You know, it's it's not like you know you're going to change strategy based on anything you're going to scout there. So, uh, yeah. And there we have twelve. Ooh, um, does it actually use anything for its scout? I guess it must get uh, link speed. Yeah, it gets link speed. Yeah. I actually think it's like a small tweak away from beating Eris. At least this build yeah. of Eris. 
Yeah. I think either if he pulls all of his drones with three, with the initial attack, three I think is all you need to continue uh, Zergling production. Yeah. Or if he has like Ling Micro, where he won't engage overwhelming amounts of drones. Yeah, and, and this was the biggest <laughs> thing with the last thing is like, I think uh, Eris lost one drone in the, in the initial attack, and uh, Twelve Bullbot lost all of his Zerglings. Uh, so just a bit better Micro on there, I think, would at least you know give Eris more of a problem. Yeah, we've seen so much worker rushing in the bot world, though. We've actually discovered that workers are way, way stronger than Zerglings yeah. with the ability to uh, mineral walk backwards. Yeah. You just get off so many more attacks than the Zerglings do. You can have, yeah. like, 50 workers and all of them are able to attack just because of the mineral walking ability. Yeah, so Eris again sees the uh, wing rush coming. Yeah, but again, his pool is only about three quarters of the way done, so these sixlings will arrive unopposed, except for those deadly workers. Oh, so let's yeah. see how it goes this time. Right. Time to start picking up workers, if you can. You're going to see one worker go down, I think. Yeah, he's actually got two workers, yeah, which is interesting. Good. Now the worker micro actually loses another one there, but uh, oh, wow. worker micro is enough to clean up the rest. Okay, so three three drones down. That's three more than last time. Yeah. We might have a fight here. We'll see. Uh, Lings are out now for Eris, however. Yeah, actually, Eris was so far ahead last time. I don't think three less workers are going to make much of a difference. No, I mean, and at this point, he's just going to throw two by two. Noah's Ark style. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, and the Queen's out again. Even worse. I'm noticing Eris actually has Ling Micro as well, so he'll pull back the ones that are weak. Yeah. And Links have so few hit points that they can regenerate to full pretty quickly, so keeping them alive is yeah. quite important. A few more coming speed in. is on the way now for Eris, but speed is complete for yeah, well, 12 pool bots, so he's points. got that advantage. Um, still no joy. Eris yeah. lost. Yeah, two two workers and a surgeon is all Laris has lost so far. I do like how Eris's queens like uh, cancel the, making a creep tumor whenever they see an attack coming in. Yeah. He's saving that energy for emergency transfuse. Yeah, I, I don't think it's gonna help. Though. I don't think creep spread is really uh, a problem here for Eris. No. <laughs> Not the biggest deal in ZBZ yeah. either. In fact, some pro Zerg players won't even do anything beyond connecting their bases with creep. Just because it's an advantage for the opponents as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's, uh, that better opening for 12 pool bot will mean he'll die in 10 minutes instead of 9. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about all we got to say for this. <laughs> Unfortunately so. I think it's uh, almost time to... Do uh, fast forward this a bit. Uh, yeah, but oh, he got a queen. He got a queen. Uh, that's that's good. Twelve full bot yeah. got a queen. Yeah. He gets queens because Eris's is uh, zerglings just like yeah. to watch them die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. Two drones, three zerglings, and the queen. I mean, 12 pool, he probably gets up to maybe 16 drones, and then if he pulls all but three, that means he could arrive with like six lings and 13 drones. I think that would be able to overwhelm a yeah. pure drone defense. Yeah. Or at least he'll get a lot of damage done before Eris's lings pop. Could be interesting if that were added to this bot. Yeah. But then it'd have to rename the um, 12 pool and drones. It's still a 12 pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good point. You build a pool at 12, that's a 12 pool. <laughs> yeah. There's macro across. 12 pool builds too, where you like yeah. use it versus Terran, you move across and just cancel their expansion with six lings, and then you're droning behind it the entire time. Yeah. It's actually a pretty good opener. Uh, I'm still watching on my game, but I think you can happily fast forward. Yeah, I think side. we will uh, <laughs> fast forward this. I don't think it's going to be interesting for people to watch the uh, Noah's Ark of drones of uh, Zerglings. Let's try to guess the, the, the finish time. I'm going to say 10.46. Uh, I, I think it's going to be 9.30. Right. Um, 
The only reason this club's in the file size and it's slightly smaller than the last one. But <laughs> so I might have oh, been cheating you. there. So <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong though. Yeah, I, no. I think I think I am gonna be wrong. Maybe more to Mike because the spawning locations are closer. Yeah, yeah possibly. Eris <laughs> <laughs> wants to add some users. Um, yeah, I think uh, you might be uh, closer than me. We'll do a Price is Right style, <laughs> so you can still win. <laughs> oh, no. There you go. I'm packed you exactly on time. There we go. What did I say? 10.36? I, I thought you said 10.46. 10.46? 10.50, so yeah. Wow. So I win, I, I win both showcases, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all. yeah. There you go. You win everything. Do British people understand Price is Right puns? I don't know. I, I think <laughs> I, I think they're universal. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know if you had that to each other. Uh, yeah. um, what's so... Yeah, congratulations to Eris. Yeah, Eris... Uh... Takes the expected win, um, but there will be easier games for 12 pool bot later in the tournament, so yeah. uh, not out yet. Still got two more games to prove himself. And, and with Eris, there's always like two competitions like, will he win the tournament and will he sweep the tournament? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he's maintaining his perfect sweep record so far. It's doing it well so far, uh, but yeah, there's uh, lots more to come. Um, right. Okay. So what have we got next? Next up is going to be Sharkbot up against Spud. Ooh, that'll be a good match. Which is Sharkbot's Shark been in... jumping up the ladder with the uh, yeah. exit of negative zero. Sharkbot is now, I think, clearly the number one Protoss bot that exists. Yeah, definitely. Um, up to number three in the uh, ladder this, this year. So... Uh... I like how he's a bot that can do anything. Like you name a unit, he has code written for it, and yet he still prefers like worker rushing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it makes like I got all this advanced mothership code. Uh, let's just send the drone. Let's yeah. just send the uh, robes at the start. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we've well, got all this in the background. If you need it, you know, just just keep it there. You know, guys, you know, stay there. We'll, we'll, we'll send the drones first. You know, and then like, you know, I wonder if we could just do like a ladder, like some drones. If they don't work, we'll send the zealots. Uh, we'll send some adepts, then some stalkers, and uh, you know maybe get through after that. But all right, I'm good to go when you are. I'm all set. All right, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, down in the bottom right, it is the number thirteen seed, I believe. No, no, number fourteen seed. Sorry, it is Spud. And in the top left, with only seven probes for a mysterious reason, it is the red Protoss Sharkbot. Where could those probes be? I have no idea. Oh. Okay, so this is interesting. If this is, I think I've watched a game of Sharkbot against my bots on the ladder, and he actually does a probe rush and secretly puts up a cannon rush at the same time. So let's see if that's what we're actually going to see here. Oh, that would, that uh, Spud actually stacking cheap. his worker. Is this going to be an interesting defense? Yeah. So he keeps And then his charges out of his own base. It does allow him to get a nice little intercept on the probe there. Yeah. So there's still two right at the back there, meaning he can't mine, but they're going to get taken down. So very, very well dealt with by Spud so far, I think. Yeah, but uh, Spud is like, it's kind of breaking yeah. his code. You know, this is going down one of those branches that your bot rarely cares about. And he's unable to make a depot and he's not mining. And meanwhile, in the background, we do have a getting up there oh. to fully saturate a base for Shark Bot. So. And a pylon, a pylon in the back of the base. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Spud. I'm sorry. And Spud is totally broken against this one pro. Yeah. I see that. Oh, it hasn't this seen is the Depot yet. Depot opener of a brand new build that uh, Maru hasn't uh, figured out yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, still doesn't see the uh, cannon rush. No. But this base is so big that the cannons are actually pretty far away from the mineral line. Yeah. Uh, however, with no barracks, I don't have uh, high hopes for... Oh, there's no way of getting this down, here. is there? It's like, you know, as soon as he brings the uh, cannons closer, then... Got the gateway up. That ah, right. It's taken two and a half minutes, but finally he's got a gateway. That's good. See, when you write your bot, you build this like 
huge tree, and then when you get worker rushed, it goes off on this little stick of a branch at the bottom of the trunk, and it's like, okay, now the rest of my tree is completely useless. And we're working out this one little stick that I only coded for a straight up worker rush, but this is a weird worker rush, so I'm not doing it properly. So what I would say as well is you've got this one little uh, probe in the mineral line there that's just gone down, had about like yeah. t 10 kills or something stupid. Yeah, so finally getting everything under control, I think you'll probably um, be mining once again. I mean, to some level now of control, yeah, that's that's not a level of control. <laughs> Yeah, I think this game is over. With uh, Spud has no workers left. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this one, guys, because yeah, zero workers. Yeah, it's just so over that my Starcraft two just crashed on me. Uh, is this like? <laughs> I give up. Oh, I can see on the stream that there's a worker's missing. I'm guessing they tried to uh, face tank the cannons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like I, I guess we can go and take out the cannons, right? You know. No, it doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. So, GG. Sharkbot uh, with a nice little uh, worker micro takes down game one. Okay, let's see if uh, Spud has any more defense of this in game two. <laughs> Dyson says, this is what you get for unionizing. And it's like, no. <laughs> I don't think SCVs are unionized. They, they would not get sent to their death so readily if they were. So the moral of the story, guys, join the union. <laughs> <laughs> uh. All right, game two is up and ready to go whenever you are ready. I'm all set. Okay, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, down in the bottom left, again sending out the probes. It is shock bots. And the, uh, the top right, we have the well-developed bot that we won't see any of that development of. It is the Blue Terran Spud. Uh, you know, maybe this is a bit too early. You know, he's got a good chance. Maybe if uh, something happens. But, uh, yeah. We'll it seems like Spud just won't develop well unless all of the probes are gone. So he needs to kind of kill them all off, and then things will get going well. Let's see if he actually cancels the depot or lets it finish. Hopefully, he lets it finish. Oh, I think it's, it's going to finish. There we go. That yeah, that's good. Last okay. Time. Yeah. Oh, He's stacking up on that <laughs> mineral patch, but yeah, not really fighting party. very well. <laughs> oh. I think the idea is he wants to overshoot the workers, and then that way they can't retreat back on a normal mineral walk, yeah. which works for the classic. Uh. Overrunning bots. <laughs> He's so confused. He doesn't know what to do here. Uh, no, but no, no Sharkbot is mining all of his minerals. It's like he's just having a little dance party. Like, let's go dance SCVs. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Starting the counter rush in the natural this wow, time. Okay. That's interesting. That's, yeah. They're doing their own little Tina Turner tribute right there. Like, you know, <laughs> dancing with SCVs. Don't know if that'll work though. Here comes the first cannon. So I'm wondering if Sharkbot did that because he saw like the uh, DST, the supply depot on the on the high ground, or maybe that's some other reason. Um, yeah, it could be. It could be like to start a certain range away from a Terran structure, yeah. and because the depot is done, it started on the low ground. Yeah. So I think what happens classically versus a pro brushing bot is the the, the pro brushing bot, the probes just kind of mineral walk back, and they they do so when they run out of shields and they just never die. So I think what Spud was trying to do is he mineral walks past the probes and then attacks them. And that yeah. allows him to get a kick to get kills. But Sharkbot's like, that's fine, because I'm not trying to retreat back to my house. I'll just sit in your mineral line. And... <laughs> now Spud's oh. little like edge case code is stuck in limbo. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. know what to do. It's uh it's gonna be there for a while. Yeah, well, I mean, the good news is he's not going to lose to the cannon rush. He will lose <laughs> to that first zealot, however. Yeah. Uh, so probably not that soon. You say that now, but that, that those cannons are getting awfully close. Yeah, they, maybe those new cannons will get off the ship. We'll, def we'll definitely take down the, uh, the depot on the high ground if it gets vision. Yeah, so first zealot coming out.
Still got a little dance party going on. I do like the way he kind of walks his cannons forward. That's yeah. More clever than typical cannon rush bots I've seen. I wonder if that cannon can reach one of those uh, workers. Possibly not. But it's got um, no vision. It's got no, no it's... high ground vision. But well, now it can. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, you might uh, trade all your workers to get that zealot. Success. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you got the zealot down. It's fine. Still no high ground vision for the uh, cannon though. So. That's yeah, good... and uh... <laughs> I mean, just send that probe up there onto the high ground and then take out like half the workers. Yeah, I do like the train of probes still guarding the mineral line. <laughs> <laughs> Shield batteries on the way, that might mean the stock is yeah. used. No, still zealots. Still zealots. <laughs> but he does have a cypher core, so it's an option. And there's another cannon there. how this all can get on. Let's theorycraft how Spud can win this game right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rely on, do, do something crazy and hope that Sharkbot crashes. This is what you do. You pick up your workers in the command center, float to another base, and Sharkbot will just continue yeah. to cannon rush your empty base, and then you win that way. Yeah. <laughs> well, how do you win, though? Because there are so many cannons at that point, there's been no way through it. <laughs> Well, you hope Sharkbot's code yeah. is written poorly enough that he just cannon rushes the empty base. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now all the workers are going to follow the zealot. Alright, there is right, no workers left. I'm going to fast forward this guy, sorry. I, I'm done with the dance party. GG. Yeah. And the probe's actually joining the fight now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, a couple quick series to start this off. I'm yeah. actually hoping not to run to shark bot because I think my bot might die in a similar fashion. <laughs> which means that once again I'll have to put work into defending worker rush, which is the least fun thing to code. <laughs> well, if there is ever a solution to a uh, a short series, um, it might be our next uh, next matchup. Um, yeah, shark bot definitely looking uh, looking scary, and again. Spud does have a lot of good tactics, but that was not one of them. Um, yeah, these next two series will be good. Yeah. So we're getting closer in uh, in seeding. So, um, so I think Benbot BC was number five, if I am right, and Kaninana was number twelve. So yeah, yay. so it should it's be number five or six. Number five was uh, Benbot BC. <sighs> did he pass me at the last moment? I think he did. That's how I. Have you Benbot? <laughs> Let me just check. Uh oh no, sorry. So you were because you you were full. Oh, I see. Because, because one Zoe... of the bots didn't go yeah. in. Yeah, yeah. Zoe... Okay, gotcha. Evil did... Zoe, gotcha. Yeah. That's correct. So you are fourth seed. Benbot BC is fifth seed. Um, and all right, it's good to go with game number one when you are. Uh, yep, yeah, all set. Cool. All right, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, down in the bottom left, it is the fifth seed. Coming into the tournament, it is Benbot BC. And in the top right, we have the somewhat new bot in Kani Nana making his first ProBots appearance in the last uh, ProBots tournament. Yep. And if I recall correctly, a very good macro Zerg bot. So this will be interesting against like a yeah. a turtley Ben bot. Um, he plays for value against a bot that's like two bots that are well built for the mid late game. We'll say. Yeah. Definitely of course, has... as I say that, I forgot the Benbot does oh, like yeah. to bunker <laughs> contain, so let's hope the Cannonana can handle this, or we may have another close, quick series. Yeah, Cannonana made a decent run in our last tournament as well, made it to the quarterfinals, so... Uh... Mm, okay, yeah, so he's been yeah. two tourneys then. Yeah. yeah, so this is his second appearance, hoping to make it even further. Uh, a tough opponent to start with, though, definitely. Um, but again, if you want to get into the... Uh into the upper ranks of the tournament, there's no easy opponents. That is true. Now, I've seen 
Ben Butt actually put Bungers at the bottom of the ramp versus Eris before and get some success. So I'm not sure if he's actually going to try to bunker rush this hatchery or not. The hatchery does have an overlord over top of it, so it won't be a hidden bunker, that's for sure. Yeah. Sometimes you can sneak a bunker up if there's no vision there because the building hatchery doesn't show you much. Uh, it's also good for cannon rushes, so... Um, but you will see it, I think, straight up there. Yep. Yeah, pool's only two-thirds of the way done, though. So I suspect that he will be able to complete this. No drones are being pulled to deal with the SCV. Yeah, no, no instant reaction there, so... Um, so that's going to be a complete bunker. Yep. And here comes the... Uh... Oh, no, nothing in there to put in the bunker just yet. Oh, wait, there is yeah. a... Marine, second Marine coming along now to join his friend. Yeah, this is still fine. I mean, there's only one barracks across the map, so you can just build up a bunch of Zerglings and flood and overrun it. Yeah. Uh, looks like a Roach Horn is on the way, so you can do the same thing with Roaches. Yeah. Uh, you just have to do so before the Hatchery dies. And yeah, this is what you don't want to be doing. I want, didn't want to see as the Zerglings running on their own. However, they did an okay job of keeping themselves alive. Yes. Yeah, so Three marines in there, so it's going to be a bit of a problem keeping that hatchery alive. Still the queen's there now. Need to transfuse that queen though. Yeah, transfuse this is unfortunate. It. Transfuse it! No! Not even getting the uh, SCV. Yeah, this is why I didn't want to see the trickle into the bunker. This is going to be big problems now. Uh, we do have four roaches on the way. Maybe he can save this hatchery, but it doesn't yes. look like it. I don't think that hatchery is going to be saved. It's going to die, though. Right, got another queen out. Okay. Actually, yeah, if he attacks here. Yeah, this is uh, looking But bad. only two roaches. Yeah, they're kind of coming in piecemeal. No, that SCV is not being targeted SCV, down. Uh, yeah, target okay. down the SCV. That's be big. Or Kani Nana, not looking good. <laughs> uh, unfortunately not. Okay, let's at least engage with the Broodlings, please. No, okay. Oh, we do. Take a couple of uh, Boeings out with the Broodlings, so yeah. Yeah. Basically, you gotta build up and just swarm the bunker. Worst case scenario, you swarm with the Broodlings, which makes it really easy, but of course you don't want to lose the hatchery. Yeah. He does have Burrow now, which is... Okay, so I think he's going to break out of this. Yeah. He's just going to be very, very far behind. Yeah. Uh... Unless there's a scan micro out of Venbots, this will just probably slowly kill off the bunker. Assuming he doesn't lose any roaches, which I don't think he will. Yeah. There is a uh, second command set of the Venbot VC and he's uh, far ahead of workers though, so he's... He's still got yeah. a decent lead. Yeah, very good lead. As long as the Roach Micro is on point, I think this could be okay. Yeah. However, these Roaches don't get to fight very long. As soon as they pop up, they're low in health and not to go down again. I mean, there's a scan. He's got a scan, right? He's got a Orbital Command somewhere? Yeah, he's got Orbital Command, so he can scan that if he wants to. Okay, there it goes. Yeah. So what time are you out there? It is cleaned up. It's at 4.55. So how are you doing? I just realized I don't have the, <laughs> the time showing on my ah. overlay here. Okay, now at 5.08, 9, 10. Okay. Yeah, I felt like I was a little bit ahead there. Yeah. All right, awesome. So. Okay, so we got a wall and a bunker out of Binbots and a hatchery coming down now for County Nana. A very good amount of roaches. This is actually enough roaches to go in the game if you knew it. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. Until that siege thing comes out at least. Yeah, but you got like the work account for Benbot BC is like 18, 16 ahead. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's a fair chunk. In fact, it's probably oversaturating on there, especially with speed mining. One thing we know about Ben Bod is he does not like to, you know, try to win the game early. Yeah. So there'll be time. And given enough time, Zerk can, like, you know, they can get the drone kind up pretty quickly. Yeah. It's a long I'm way guessing with that many roaches that uh, Canyonana will probably only be building drones for quite a while. Yeah. So 
There's still a long way to go in this matchup. Mm -hmm. And uh, Benbot BC does like an early rush, but uh, does like to take his time after that. Yeah, I can cut some shells on the way. Starports are putting its add on on. Uh, third uh, command center is being built. Yep. Meanwhile, Kani Nana is saturated on one and a half bases now, so very, very slowly catching up. Yeah, he does actually have the highest average uh, winning time in on of any of our qualified bots at the moment. So I was looking at. Yeah, that, they, uh, these are two late game bots. That yeah. is <laughs> definitely the case. That's why I was actually happy to see him against Benbot because I know Kainan is weak to the cheese but strong in the late game and I thought Benbot would be the yeah. bot to allow him to get to the late game. And he kind of did, I guess, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's... not in the way you'd expect, I guess. Uh, quite... Actually, these are some good upgraded bio here. These roaches yeah. are going to have trouble. Picking up two Marauders, very nice. But uh, Burrow Micro is super strong in the bot meta. Yeah. It's just basically makes you have invulnerable uh, roaches until they get detection of some sort. Well, there are uh, some scans around um, if he wants to use them. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. Yeah, I'm guessing Benbot's more reliant on the Ravens for detection just based on the lack of scans to this point. Yeah. There and there, speaking of the devil, there yep. is the raven. <laughs> so that's going to deal with the uh, Burrow Micro quite well. And even with that detection, Eris, uh, Eris Kadadam looks like she's uh, breaking through. Even with the detection, he's burrowing and retreating, which is what you want to do. And of course, when burrowed roaches prepare, heal at an extremely fast rate. Heal even faster than medevac's heal units, so. And he's saturated a third base in the meantime with a fourth on the way. Yeah, so we nice. got a game, I think. Yep. I think uh, Benbot BC does have a lot more drones, a lot more SCVs, but, uh, you know, I think he's oversaturated on a lot of the bases here. So, yeah, it's... He needs to get another uh, command center up, and he's uh, on the way with that, which is uh, a good sign for him. Yeah, just in, to keep perspective, only three roaches have died so far, compared to 47 marines and two marauders, so... Yeah. I haven't even been checking that, but yeah, a lot of... Yeah, uh, the roaches have done quite well to yeah. kind of get him back into this game a little bit. Yeah. Marauders are coming out there, which are... Better against roaches. Yeah, Benbot BC has been very inefficient with his trades. But, you know, there is that BC at the end of the name of Benbot BC, yeah. so <laughs> I think we'll see a stronger late game out of Benbot. Zerg late game is very difficult to code because it usually is reliant around spellcasters. Yeah. Eris and the Previous version of Air Spiny being the only two Zerg bots I know who are strong at that. And roaches that don't scale well to the late game. So I'm guessing we might see County Nana take a lead, but even if we do, Ben Bot is, uh, I think, probably still a favorite. I don't know. We'll have to see how this turns out. It's, it's very, uh, very difficult to call. And of course, Ben Bot's built like a brick at home planetaries, widow mines, siege tanks, bunkers. Yeah, it's very difficult to take anything away from Ben Bot PC. Fourth base has landed, and he's got plenty of SCVs to fully saturate it immediately. That'll be a huge boost to the income. Yeah, almost uh, equal now. Yeah. Any Nana actually doing triple upgrades with three Evo chambers. That's interesting. I, yeah, I guess there must be a reason for that. But, uh... Hydra Den Inspire is down, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, he's yeah. building roaches and zerglings, so... Yeah, hydras are... Yeah. doesn't hurt to upgrade everything, I guess. Hydras are going to be very good as well. Um, especially against these this many medivacs. Could probably snipe off one or two. There is one thing I've noticed with the uh, bot authors who don't play a lot of StarCraft 2, is that they love upgrades. So, yeah. <laughs> if your race has 24 upgrades, your the bot author will get all 24 upgrades. <laughs> There's no like, oh, yeah. well, for this composition, I should oh, probably only get these yeah. three. No, it's like, I'm getting everything. <laughs> I mean, just in case you might need it, you know, it's, it's, it's worth, the, worth that. Nice little trade here. A little bit better for Benbot PC. Yeah, that'll be a huge win for Benbot PC. Yeah. Oh, the Burrowed's retreat is not working when they're retreating into the bio. Yeah. <laughs> and that is a whole lot of dead roaches. Okay, and yeah. There's a lot of ravens there as well, so all the. Uh, it's going to be completely visible when they're burrowed. And see Corruptor get tagged, so we're going to see some uh, air units now out of County Nana. He did get upgrades for his Hydras, so I'm thinking we will see Hydras at some point, but. Uh, yeah. Not yet. I mean. I think Hydras would do quite well in here, but yeah. Yeah, Roaches are nice and tanky, but they really don't have a whole lot of damage. And when you're facing Bio with a lot of Metavacs, you kind of need some damage output. Yeah. Ideally from things like Lurkers, but at least Hydras, <laughs> you know? Yeah. If Roaches alone is not going to cut it, as we're going to see in this fight here. I mean, they are getting the wraparound from the back, so maybe that might help, but no, you're right. It's, it's just not enough. Yeah, even with 1-1 upgrades. I mean, it will clean up this bio eventually, but at what cost? Yeah, the queens are doing nice, transfusing each other. Roaches actually had a retreat path this time, so they're able to stay alive with their little burrow and flee. Okay, that was actually a nice fight. Yeah. We'll take it all back. It may be enough now to challenge this expansion in the south. We'll see. Take it all the way down. No real uh, tanks or artillery from uh, Benbot BC at the moment either. Uh, a That's a bad back. combination. Yeah. Roaches are afraid of the planetary, so they can't get in range of the bio. <laughs> like, we want to attack the bio, but we can't. Yeah. Uh, it does take out the fifth base, however. And uh, so a lot of roaches are raining. Yeah. Just can't get Great in. spread is looking pretty nice at this point. That's something bots are always good at, is uh, spreading creep. Yeah, really late start for the creep spread for Canyon Yeah. It's Helps looking a little better now. Trapped in its own base for the first five minutes, so uh, yeah. Oh, these poor roaches just standing there and taking it. Yeah, it's not too devastating just have a few marines shooting at you because it does mean he will be able to keep them alive with the burrow micro. Yeah. It's more walking into like the siege tank range where they're actually dying. Yeah. Which is more on the left side. Yeah, this base has got like two siege tanks, like a liberator and uh, two two widow mines sat there. Like I think it's going to be pretty safe on top of a planetary, by the way, as well. Yeah, it, you're going to have great difficulty taking down this base. What and it is doing though is keep yeah. him contained on the four bases then. Yeah, go ahead, yeah. right. And here comes the BCs that Benbot BC is so famous for. Yeah. It's funny, every iteration of Benbot BC has been less focused on BCs. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be like a BC rush, and then a two base in the BC, and then just late game BCs, and now <laughs> now we're not seeing them until the 15 minute mark. <laughs> well, Kalinana is now tagging for Brute Lords, so maybe we'll see some of those. Yeah, I do see four corruptors being built, which I'm hoping is to kill the battle cruisers. But you, like you said, it might be for brute lords. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fifth base actually went up unnoticed. There were a whole bunch of roaches there. Then they yeah. just got fiddled away at. So he is getting all the workers are transferring over there. But uh, fifth base will finish and become a planetary, which is very good for Benbot. Yeah, that's going to be good. Looks yeah, Corruptor's doing their work, forcing the teleports from the battle cruisers. Yeah, I'm not getting any 
kills immediately, but uh, as long as they get them to teleport out, it's all good. Yeah. Oh, and a little parasites on the uh, PCs as well. Oh, really? Very nice. Yeah. What's he going to do with it? Despite yeah. other BCs, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's good yeah. Sometimes they like used to use. Oh no, he used the Yamato. Very yeah, nice. Yeah, he used the Yamato, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, Ganyan yeah. are getting like, really complex for this bot. Yep. So. Wow, this is quite the fight. I mean, the Roaches they get hammered pretty badly by Benbot PC, and Benbot does have a fifth base now. Both of which are good, but uh, yeah, the Corruptors doing, Corruptors and Investors doing very well versus the BCs. Yeah. Oh, I like this, oh. the Corruptors are killing the Neural BC as well. I do like to see that. No, I think that the Neural, the neural Parasite got him to teleport into the base. So yeah, do you see where he teleported to? There's yeah. five spores there. He built a killed... <laughs> kill <laughs> they zone, like a yeah. Kill yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. Yeah, I think this is better than Eris' uh, yeah. anti-BC code. Yeah, the uh, warp outs on the BC again. Oh, some nice mine hits there on the Corruptors though, at the uh, fourth base. So, it's an interesting situation where Canada has a very much a stranglehold on the map, but I don't think Benbot BC is going to be running out of minerals anytime that soon. Although, having said that, um, yeah, he's got uh, one well, here's the thing. Defense. Yeah, but Benbot's not even trading like efficiently, is what you, you would think of being on the defense, but. So, yeah, like if you're trading really well, then I'm saying, yeah, five bases is plenty. But he's kind of trading evenly, so the BCs are helping, but as we've seen, the anti-BC code is very strong as well. Yep. It's starting to look good for uh, Kanyanana. Yeah, I mean, there's no 6 coming, that's for sure. Yeah. In fact, the 6th base is being taken by Kanyanana now. <laughs> or Benbot's 6th base, I should yeah, say. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Nice big Kanyanana. bank for Kanyanana, 6k, yeah. 3k. Yeah, he's not running out of minerals anytime soon. Benfort needs to break through pretty soon, else this game is going to just go out and get out of the hand. Yeah, I mean, the Yamatos are obviously really good value. You can keep the BCs alive quite well. Yeah. So it's all about whether uh, the BC count will grow or whether it will be kept in check by the investors and corruptors. Oh my gosh, so Widowmine just attacked his own uh, Battlecruiser. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that naturally happened, so I think the bot actually targeted his own BC thinking it was an enemy. <laughs> I mean, it's easy to do on that, because I think it does show up as like an enemy structure once it's mulled, right? Oh, I don't know, actually. I don't think it... Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Widowmines do automatically yeah. target. Possibly. Yeah, neural units, yeah. Because I don't think it shows up as an enemy in the API. Okay. I thought it did, but I may be wrong. I think there's like two ways to identify an enemy, and like one way will still say it's like, it's still Terran Alliance, but yeah. the other way is to say like who has control, and they yeah. will say like uh, the, uh, the opponent's control. Yeah. I can't recall correctly. So, but... I think it's, uh, yeah, like you said, it's just uh, identifying the, uh, the owner of the Alliance. So here's the thing, when things are going really well for Kanyanana, he gets to fight a planetary or bunkers. <laughs> then he just loses everything. <laughs> so whenever he gets like a really good lead, he just throws it away by walking into yeah. Widow Mines and Siege Tanks. But look at the, the supply is dropping for that bot BC. And, uh, uh, and yeah, these SCVs are like running back and forth, they're not mining the third base correctly. Yeah, there's no, there's no bank either. Look at Kanyanana's bank. Like, Kanyanana's basically got the iron bank right there. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I see what's happening. When the bunker gets attacked on the front line, he pulls all the workers away from his third to repair it, and then loses all of his workers. So I guess there is progress being made, even though you're walking into a yeah. siege tank line and losing everything. Because <laughs> you do get SCVs out of it. Yeah. So 
Uh, yeah, he's lost 156 workers at this point, and a lot of it is because of the SCVs running back and forth from the third to the natural. Yeah, 193 Zerg and also lost. But, uh, and, and there's just not really enough income really for uh, Benbot BC to do much. Yeah, still a growing bank for Kenny Nana, so that's not going to be an issue for quite a while. Yeah. I guess the big deal with units lost, if we saw that Benbot was like 20k ahead of units lost, I could say, yeah, this is going to be a close game, but yeah. it's not. It's dead even, and losing the third base now. That's a big it's deal. Almost time to, to call this, actually. Like, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Alright, GG. Terrific game out of Kenny Nana. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly what I was hoping for, is to see a, a nice long game out of these two bots. Two late yeah. game masters. It's a really great macro for Kananana to just kind of like take over the map and, and just really strangle out their bot PC. And I think uh, in terms of tournaments, Kananana has deserved this. <laughs> He's at the bot that's had all his potential, that he like shows up into a tournament and he gets worker rushed and we never get to see it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... so it's good to see. Uh, how well this spot has been developed, because I knew it was such a good bot uh, until this point. Yeah. Nice overseer control, by the way, too. He's always getting vision on those widow mines and taking them out. Yeah. Well, it's a uh, brilliantly played game out of Kaninana. Oh, you even had the Broodlords at the end there, so yep. very nice. Yeah, just even show up to uh, do the victory lap. All right, let's have a look at game two. Uh, yeah, but let's say Canada reached our quarterfinals last time, I believe. Um, yeah, very well made bot, and hopefully, uh, maybe looking to get one further, or maybe even two further this time. Uh, who knows? Yeah, nice little comeback. Yeah. And so is he down two bases to one, <laughs> and with like half the worker count at one point? Yeah. All right. Uh, good to go when you are. Yeah, just loading in. Give me one second. All right, time all set. Cool. All right, it's going in three, two, one, go. Okay, up in the top right, looking to come back from the one nil deficit. It is Ben Pop BC. And in the bottom left, up one to zero, it is the blue Zerg Kaninana, who. I always thought for the longest time was a cannon rush bot. <laughs> it was I just mean, this name I saw on the ladder, and it like does, it's got to be a cannon rush bot, right? What it does else would sound it be? that way, doesn't it? It's like cannon nana. It's like cannon nana. No, <laughs> it doesn't even make it's sense. Either banana yeah. eating bots or it yeah. or rushes cannons. Those are the only two options. Yeah, yeah. We don't have many banana fans around here, but uh, we'll try. All right, so we do have the proxy barracks that will not be scattered by the opening overlord. Hello, it's getting close, uh, but no, won't see it. Yeah, well, once again, he will have an overlord over at his hatchery, so he does have vision of anything that gets popped up in nearby. Yeah. But I'm suspecting he will not be able to uh, jump that bunker while it's in production, as he wasn't able to last game. No. Probably not. Second barracks going down at home for Benbot BC. I think if he does, he's in a good spot. But uh, yeah, it's just how well he can deal with his initial bunker. Yeah. And the human meta, this isn't a thing. You can't do like a, a one barracks bunker rush because Zerk so can just kind of sit back, let you shoot the hatcher for a while, and then just overwhelm you and take yeah. it out. It's, just, it's not enough firepower. And you can overwhelm with anything. Queens, lings, or yeah. roaches. You can even wait, wait for uh, Ravagers if you want. Yeah. Okay, so once again, the bunker does get spotted and he pulls the Overlord away afterwards. And uh, yeah, so we'll get have one Ling inside before the Zerglings are out on the map. Yeah, we're ready to jump in when the SCV is finished. It's like, get a move on, make my bunker. There we go. The shooting starts. There's a small detail, but I do like that the SCV is going to the far side of the bunker. Yeah. Because I think just the natural A move ish attack means that the SCV will be very, very safe for a long period of time. Yeah. That's probably one of the keys to this attack is keeping that SCV alive. So we can get the repairs off. Uh, third barracks out of Benbot. Is this different? 
I feel like this is different than the last game. Maybe, yeah. Did he go this hard on before he expanded? I can I don't even actually know. I don't know. I suspect not. Um, I suspect this is something different. Um, single uh, surging over the other side of the map. The queen does go down. Yeah, Kenny now is not preserving the zerglings like he did last time too. Yeah. Last time, every time he rode him with a wave of zerglings, all of them died but one. This time, every of the zerglings dead except for the one on the way out in the map, which is probably dying to die on its own as it yeah. scouts. Coaches have hit the field now. Yeah, Two queens. This is going to be a big, big problem here. So, um, Baro is on the way as well, almost ready. Yeah, don't want to lose those roaches before Burro, which he's yeah. is just happening. Because <laughs> <laughs> Burro roaches was his method to break out of this last time. Okay, so Burro's complete, so now down. the roaches should be surviving. That hatchery will go down. Rulings might get these zerglings, or these uh, marines, I mean. Yeah. yeah, no, they'll just uh, suicide themselves on the back of a bunker. It's a very similar spot to last time. I think a little bit better for Benbot this game because yep. the uh, he lost a roach and a couple more queens. Yeah, there's uh, 13 zerglings, a roach, three queens, and of course the hatchery. And another book drone. Yeah, good amount of bio across the map. We do have, um, what did he just research? He got stim? Yeah. So. He finished researching something. It wasn't combat shields, so it was either concussive shell or stim. Okay, roaches are making the attack now, and they will do the burrow micro to keep their hit points alive, but yep. again, there's just so many marines here. They can only pop up for half a second, take one shot, and then they got burrow again. There is enough energy for a scan. If uh, there we go. Oh wait, scanning nice. There we go. Yeah, instant reaction though. Very nice set of cannon Yep. Marauders are here. That's going to be a lot more firepower against these roaches as they do double damage to armored. Yeah. Marauders are painful for roaches, unfortunately. All the time we have more and more uh, by spreading across the map from Benbot BC. This is not looking good for Kaninana. No, not so much. I think he'd already broken up by this point last time. Yeah. It's not a scan if he's got one. The only plus side is he is getting to engage outside of bunker range a little bit. Yeah. Roaches are very flirting with death. Oh, so low. One scan and they'd all be dead. Oh, I say that, yeah, we've got the scan! Not shooting, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Oh, this is... Kanginana's yeah, you know, not looking good oh, here. Yeah. One Marauder does go down, that's helpful. Queen's joining the fight, that's also helpful. Okay. I take it back, that went okay for Kanginana, but again, he's still stuck here. Yeah. I kind of thought he was going to lose the game right there, so it's just nice to see that he did a good fight to stay in it. But this might just be delaying the inevitable here. Yeah, Benbot PC is up on two bases. Um, big, big lead in the economy. Yeah, Burrow movements is completed, so they will regenerate even quicker now while Burrow. It's going to help him, but still, I don't think it's going to help him enough. I'm surprised how small the roach count is. I guess he just, yeah, he lost a bunch in that one fight, huh? Yeah, I was hoping the. It's just a siege tank here. Siege <laughs> tank's even more. He knows in so much trouble. Yeah. Definitely not looking good. Although, biocamp for Fred Fight is still pretty low. Although, yeah, if you get hit by those uh, siege tanks. It's not going to be a good day for you. Yeah, 
you may end up even losing the grow roaches without detection because of the splash damage of siege yeah. tanks. So oftentimes there's, you know, roaches standing on top of barrel roaches. Yeah. The roach count is not growing beyond like six or seven at any one time. I was hoping it would just continually grow and you guys you kept them alive and yeah. you'd be able to overwhelm and make oh. a game of this. But the raven is coming as well. Him. Yeah, raven will get high ground vision, which is a big deal because his uh, marauders have really good range. Also vision on the borrowed roaches as well, which is... Uh... Okay, oh, yeah. so the yeah, uh, detection that's a big deal too. Yeah. 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 Oh, the raven's gone away. I don't know where the raven is. It seems to have decided that it doesn't need to be there. So yeah. Hey guys, oh, no. you can deal with it without me. It's fine. I think it's getting repaired. Yeah. Going back to the old repair bay. <laughs> So much worse than the last game for uh, the cannon owner. So now three bases up, they've got VC. Yeah. Uh, this game is going to end with that bunker intact, I'm pretty confident yeah. about it. <laughs> Clearly, it's just Ben Bot's victory, but I don't even think that there's going to be a second base out of the uh, cannon owner. Yeah. I think he's just going to push the victory right now. I think. Uh, even if he did break out, he's too far behind, but. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's so much buyout trickling across. Not many resources left on the, uh, the base either. Yeah. And the Raven's back. Yep. For like a half second, he gets hit once, and he's like, oh, I gotta go repair again. <laughs> <laughs> what a guy. You, yeah. Oh, I've got a paper cut, guys. I need to go and uh, go to hospital for this one. Worst paper cut of all time. Alright, uh, I'm gonna fast forward this one unless anyone's got any objections. I think so. Yeah, GG, guys. Even without that we'll tell you that what we see decides to take his time. Okay, GG. Right, let's uh And we have our first ace match of the day. Mm -hmm. Uh and yeah, Vembot BC picking up the comeback win. This will be a good series. I'm feeling it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's going to be a good one, guys. Uh, we're getting closer in uh, ranking as well as the games go on. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it should be uh, closer games. I'm envisioning like this scenario if it happens over and over again. I think on average, Ben Bot will probably break out most of the time. Or sorry, uh, Kenny Nando will break out most of the time. Yeah. I think he just has a lot going for it with that uh, burrowed roaches. He just needs to get the roach count up to like 9 or 10, and then I think that's yeah. enough where it'll just pop up and slowly kill that bunker. Cool. All right, so I'm good to go when you are. All set. All right, going in 3, 2, 1, go. All right, up in the top left is 1 to 1 tied up the series. It is Benbot BC. And in the top right, we have the blue zerk. It is Kani Nona. So sometimes we do see bots change up their strategy after they lose. So I'm not sure if Kani Nana will be one of those bots or not, but this is his first loss in the series, so we'll see. Yep. We do see another, looks like Barracks Rush coming out of Benbot yeah. PC, however, as he sent out a SCV right at the start of the game. I think he This is probably been. like the fastest uh, Barracks Rush he can do. He must have to cut workers yeah. to actually get this Barracks down on time. Although we do have speed mining, so maybe that's uh, adding some extra to it. That's true, that probably does help. Yeah. But I'm not sure if the uh, Overlord's going to spot this. Probably not. Oh, no, the Overlord's going to come right out over the top. And probably won't detect this again. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting barracks placement selection. If he were to send a drone or ling across the map, he would run right into that barracks, so. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the most obvious place is the place you least suspect there to be a <laughs> proxy, so no one checks there. Yeah. Right. Okay. Drone comes in and barracks goes up on the far side. 
still no reaction. Yeah, nice little place for that for that bunker. It's yeah. uh, far away from the ramp, it's still got range on the Yeah, there's not hatchery. as much surface area on that as there was, but I don't think that's gonna be a big deal because he's gonna be fighting mostly with rav roaches, so yes, yeah, uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem. Yeah, but... being right up against the edge that makes, does make it a little bit easier to keep the SCV alive, but um, yeah. As we've seen, I don't think Kenny Nana is too interested in killing that SCV anyways, so it shouldn't matter too much. Yeah, in a human game that would be more important. Um, Roach Warrant is on the way up. Yeah, the uh, two extra barracks in place as well. Roach Warrant is about halfway complete. Let's hope Kenny Nana doesn't lose too many Zerglings this time. It's the one, I think. Just the one so far. Doing yes. quite well at keeping him alive. Yeah, I like everything about that. He waits until he gets enough Zerglings, and then he goes attacks and pulls them back because they're getting weak. The only issue is that he doesn't have nearly enough to actually kill a bunker that's being repaired. Yeah. So, the just the queen. threshold for that attack is wrong. If you yeah. wait until you have like 25 buildings, then that's a whole different story. Yeah, the queens are having a problem as well. They can't get away in time. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. You want to break like generic retreat code, but it's all based yeah. on how much firepower is coming in. And it's hard to know how much firepower a bunker does because we don't know how many link or marines are inside. Yeah. Yeah, something we'd love to get. But, um, yeah. Well, even humans don't know that, right? Yeah. You know, if, the humans know a little bit more. They know if it's empty or not. Yeah. Uh, bots don't even know that in the API. So Burrow is almost complete. Yep, so Hatcher goes down. He kind of has lost a lot, including Queens. One thing he's not lost is any brooches, though, which I think is the key to him breaking out. Like, Zerglings are going to die. Queens are probably going to die. Roaches are the one thing that can possibly stay alive forever. Yeah. So I do like the fact that he hasn't lost any roaches really nearly. Yeah, and... Uh... So I would say that uh, this is actually still costing uh, the bot VC some minerals to repair. Probably not that much, but it's, uh, yeah, it's... one under minerals for every sixteen under hit points of <laughs> HP it regenerates. So very little. <laughs> well, yeah, pretty cheap. But still, uh, it's uh, something to think about. The more significant thing probably is that that SCV is not mining minerals. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the repair is not insignificant. If you got a bunch of siege tanks blasting a planetary, that's actually a lot of repair money you gotta yeah. put in to keep that PF alive. Uh, this is what it, we didn't see last game. We do see a roach count now up to like, what, 9 or 10? That's very. Yeah. 8? Even 8 is better than I think we saw last game. So I'm feeling pretty good here for Kenny Nana. Oh, there's a scan. Yep. But everything survives. Everything's, okay. Yeah, everything's gone because there's no extra bio there because the bio has been taken down. You see, like uh, 18 marines are down so far and not a single roach loss. We do have drones like trickling to their death, which I don't like to see. I think they're trying to expand somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is this safe for the bunker? I think so. Getting very close. Uh, yep, that'll down. do it. Yep, there we go. Uh, near reaction, I'm gonna pause for a couple of seconds. <laughs> Let you catch up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so okay. this is uh, very similar to game one. Yeah. So uh, now we have everything broken out, and the bunk, the barracks is on the path, so that's gonna get taken down fairly fast. Yeah, barracks got spotted a lot earlier this time. Yeah. There's a few more orders out that are doing a bit of damage, but they're not going to take anything down. Yeah. But they're doing temporary damage to roaches while taking permanent damage from the roaches, so... Yeah, <laughs> yeah all for not. Uh, barracks will escape with its life. Although it's not alive, so it doesn't have a life, but... Uh, some... Kind of makes sense. Third place on the way from Bimbot BC. So there is one major factor, assuming we're going into a late game again, yep. and that is these weird bases at the top. 
Yenbot VC knows how to take that base, even though he's misplaced his command center by one cell. Yeah. <laughs> he does know how to take that base. The question is, will Kanyanana take his? Because if he has one less base and we go into a long macro game again, that could be the deciding factor whether he wins or loses. Could be very significant, yeah. So really we're going to get into an expansion war. Yeah. And a very late macro game. Gonna see is Benbot VC throwing up the uh, almost perfect defense for everything. Marauders, uh, marauders uh, tanks, liberators, and probably mines coming out as well. Oh, Benbot is smart enough to know that that's a, a safe base, so he's building an extra orbital instead of a planetary. So, yeah, I'm kind of liking this uh, this map for Benbot VC for these yeah. reasons. Again, he's going to mine out that base slowly because it's misplaced, but I don't think income is a big deal. It's more like total resources over 20 minutes. That's going to be a big deal. Yeah, you're going to mine out that base uh, in Eventually, the time yeah. that this, this match is going to go on. Cause... Unless we all get surprised and Benbot decides to go yeah. all in or something <laughs> for the first time ever. Benbot's never been all in in his life. It's like <laughs> not, not something that Benbot does. If he did go island, he'd probably like send command centers yeah. across the map to build planetaries in your base. <laughs> yes. The the thirty minute PF rush. <laughs> uh, significant amount of bio coming across here. Let's hope the uh, some good roach play again, otherwise this could be another quick match. Really this third base goes down. Yeah, I think that's plenty of roaches. There's yeah. enough healing with one medevac there that it's not going to be great, but yeah. uh, I think it's going to be enough roaches to hold this. There's no real detection there either, so uh, yeah, you're not going to be able to take out the borrowed roaches. Oh, Queen's even joining the fight too. Yeah. It's going to be very nice. Although, Canada's a long way behind the supply, even with those roaches. Yeah, the big early lead, obviously, for Ben Bobby yeah. just to get game one. So. That's why I'm kind of cheering for things to go well for Kanye Nana, because we need him to actually have some good fights, like he did in yeah. game one, to bring this back to an even match, where we get to see the long game. Yeah. And I think that was a good fight for him. Oh, definitely. Yeah, all the bio yeah. is uh, being taken down. Um, I didn't see a queen die. Zerglings are falling, but roaches, I'm guessing, probably aren't too much. Yeah, three roaches only have yeah, died. It's, it's not many roaches are going down. I was going to take this until we get like some kind of raven or um, detection there as the raven comes in. So only a bit too late. <laughs> Showing up to the fight like, where's everyone dead? <laughs> Where'd you all go? Yeah, raven actually double tapped the Dorito cannon there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like here you have two. Yeah. Sometimes I have like I put like global cooldowns into my bots for like I'm only allowed to scan once every two seconds so I won't yeah. spam the scan on the same place because some reactions take a long many frames to actually happen and Dorito Cannon's another one of those the anti armor missile you cast it one frame and then the next frame you think you need it because it hasn't landed yet yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a good idea um, you often see that with bots the first fans everywhere um, I'm wondering if these roaches are slightly over microed as well. You know, they seem to be retreating a bit. Maybe not. Yeah, I mean, they can decide when to engage better, but yeah. their actual retreat micro I think is perfectly fine. Yeah, I think. Burrow and retreat is the way to do it. Yeah. Even if you're detected, I think it's still good to burrow and retreat because you regenerate hit points faster. Yeah. And you can move through the rest of your army so you won't get like stuck in the front. Yeah. It's kind of like mineral walking with uh, workers. Yeah, so you do it with the uh, roaches. I hear a BC. Ooh. BC is out, yep. Uh, take right. down the refinery. Much earlier in the last game. Yep. There's two queens there, they're probably smartly not engaging because they're not enough firepower to deal with that. Yeah. 
You see, three queens is a little closer. I did end just finished. Yeah, four spores on the way. Okay, very, very nice. He waited for seven queens and now he's fighting. Beautiful out of Kenny down there. Nicely done. And he lost a uh, refinery, which is uh, not extractor, sorry, which is not going to be a big problem for him. One thing I have noticed too is that Kanyanana has started mining out that, that uh, 1 o'clock base, so he might be able to take it. Yeah. Although he lost the drone that was mining it out, so if it was some kind of hard-coded <laughs> thing, which it might be for this map, yeah, <laughs> then he's lost the opportunity thanks to that BC. Yeah, I don't see any other drones going over there. Yeah. Maybe over time when he starts distance mining, when he runs out of minerals, he'll yeah. naturally deal with it. Like, my bot has no idea how to take that base, but it will just find random mineral patches when it can't mine anymore and it'll slowly distance mine it. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the whole accidentally uh, fix a bug problem. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, kind of still a little bit behind, but uh, very much catching up. Um, Venmot BC maxed out on supply. Yeah, cleanly establishing his five bases, and I think he'll be able to take a sixth as well. I mean, it looks pretty easy to take. Yeah, so we've got so, the one at six o'clock, which is... Oh, and obviously the one outside his main. Um, yeah, six o'clock will be the contested one. Yeah. If Benbuck has that, he's got it for sure. But uh, I assume that the Ken, that's going to be counting on his base. We'll have to see. Yeah. Overseer going down, very nice. Again, the creed spread from Kalinana is uh, looking pretty good. Liberator's on the way from Benbot, interesting. I that think could that's be good. just protecting the base. He does that, his uh, bases of the Liberator's down. You'll see one. You see taking out a queen and then teleporting away. Which I guess if you consider gas the bottleneck, that actually costs the BC yeah. more in repair. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's bad. I guess. Actually, I don't think the gas is a bottleneck for Ben Bob PC though, because he builds a bio all game long, and he loses yeah. marines quite often. That he may actually run out of marines first. Yeah, Ben Bob. Run out of minerals first. I mean, BC has a reasonable bank, like pretty much everything. Let's see a big attack down the uh, base. Yeah, with Liberator and the Planetary, that's yeah. not going to go well for the Roaches. That's, uh, that's a big problem for Kanadana there. He's keeping a lot of these Roaches alive, however. Losing some. I think uh, Benlon PC has more detection now, which is really helping him. Uh, but this escape with very low hit points there. Yeah, kind of the fight's going on everywhere right now. Yeah. <laughs> Take Broodlord means uh, Corruptors are probably on the way. Yeah, Corruptors on the way to yeah. deal with the PCs. And, um, this attack uh, Yeah, we're just kind of hitting from both angles, killing yeah. a lot of Marines. Yeah. And a lot to watch here. There's basically the whole... You can just like scroll up and down and you see fights the entire way in yeah. north and south. <laughs> it's almost blue flame Hellions out as well, I don't know, uh, it doesn't seem to be the yeah. ideal counter, so... Uh, but the uh, Zerglings are going to start chasing the Hellion, which is probably not what you want to do. Uh, some your Parasites going on the VCs. Teleport yourself right out to the uh, Spore Forest. But maybe not. Yeah, I mean, middle, middle mines are going down, they're getting detected and killed. These medevacs are completely dried out, so I'm guessing those marines are going to die. We do have some corruptors, which is enough to make the BCs jump away at least, which is better than nothing. Yep. Um, and maybe later we'll see the infestors once again. Yeah, so there's a command Six center o'clock. heading out somewhere. Um, yeah, going to the 6 o'clock base. Which is already <laughs> taken. Uh, yeah. there we go. Benbot's not know that though. <laughs> he will find out soon. Yep. We'll get the bad news. As he 
goes to the whole thing. It's like, you can't park there, mate. <laughs> Ooh. Whole bunch of oh. just getting murdered by those siege tanks. <laughs> yeah. And Spark Crawler gets up just in time to pick away at that uh, command center in the 6 o'clock. Yeah. Actually, a lot of roaches just went down. Yamato's picking off a lot of corruptors as well. So far, the BCs yeah. are actually doing quite well. Yeah, it's not looking too bad here for Bimbot BC. It's got a, a huge bank there. Like, yeah, gigantic cool. bank. Yeah. He's well, he's got six bases uncontested, which is one more base than last time, and he had them much earlier. Yeah, he's going to be slightly behind because of the uh, the six o'clock base is going to uh, is going to Canada, but okay, he'll we'll probably get past that. We've got a couple of BCs being neuraled there in the background. Yeah, they're going just down. when the BC count was getting out of control, like twenty corruptors arrived. Yeah. So <laughs> this is looking really good. One yeah, BC goes down there. Another one goes down. Does That's he have nice. the little spore village again? Yeah, yeah, right in the back of his main. Yeah, he's got five of them yeah. in the back of his main. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Command center is slowly dying, still looking for a place to land. Oh, it's going on a little mission. Oh no. no the command center. Okay, so this oh. is interesting. It looked like Benba was just about to wrap it up, but then those corruptors just changed the whole. The way this game is looking, all those corruptors are actually dying. He just lost three or four of them. Huge bank still for Benbot PC. This game has huh. uh, got some legs in it yet, don't worry. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I think killing that drone at one o'clock might have, might be the determining factor of this game. <laughs> Entirely possible. <laughs> if Kenny Nana does not take that north base, this could be it. He does have one drone distance mining up there. Yeah. Maybe he'll still end up taking it. Maybe he just by accident. Takes it. Yeah. But he needs to actually take the base because if he doesn't take those gas geysers, that's 4,500 less gas. Yeah. That's which a is, lot. Yeah. yeah. Just looking at the bank of Fed bought it. I think he'll need that 4,500 gas if he's going to win this. Yeah. Oh, it's still there. Oof, settle in, boys. This is going to be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Welcome to uh, two bots that like to play macro. It's all good. Yeah, just chasing down these Vikings, getting some kills. Oh, BC taking out a Viking, thanks to the Vester here, teleporting it back into five spores oh, and a queen. And yeah, that'll do it. Oh, he even gets a. Uh, you can get the other neural on it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Very well done. Oh, so another one jumping straight back into the uh, spore forest. It's so good. This is definitely, like, I think the best anti BC player we've seen yeah. out of any bot. Or any yeah. Zerg, you'll say at least. <laughs> Obviously, not, it's not something Terran and Prodos can do. <laughs> they have other methods of dealing with BCs. But... Yeah, so the uh, fourth place is going to get taken. Very low no. eh, he's got plenty of SCVs. Yeah, he's got that. SCVs repairing around there, so I think it should be. Planetary is pretty good at killing Hydras as well, so. Yeah. And he's got bio assisting. Nice I think this damage. is just going to be a nice little area for Kang now to just lose a bunch of resources. Yeah. <laughs> of course, as I say that, he's got into the red now. Oh, okay. just barely not enough oh, firepower, I think. Just about. He needs just a few more Hydras. Yeah, I know, it's just too bad he doesn't have it anymore. PC oh. even arriving. Yeah. Yeah, that was just a big loss for Kainana. Oh no, that's, uh, that's not what Kainana needed. Just breaking rocks at the, uh, thing. Another um, little parasite on the, um, on the VC. Is it going to try and jump out? It is. Uh, straight back into its death. Yeah. No. I did see the Widowmine was trying to shoot its own battle cruiser, but the battle yeah. cruiser you modeled the Widowmine first. <laughs> Terran on Terran violence going on. Yeah. <laughs> Whose side are you on, goddammit? Well, both players have no lack of resources, that's for sure. Yeah. We've got I don't some think we'll see these here. work. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Supply counts will not drop below 180 for the next 10 yeah. minutes at least. <laughs> I can say that much for, for a certain. 
A lot of hydras working on oh, that planetary again. We have at the top right. We have a hatchery at the uh, hidden base. Yeah, yeah. He cleared it out and he's able to expand. Oh, that could huh. uh, that could be critical for Kalinana. Yeah, tons of hydras dying here. Okay, good. He's pulling back. Okay. So Candy Nana gets to mine out one extra base. It's like a, the units lost, very even. Oh, and now we've got a, a CC floating from somewhere. Trying yeah, to land there. might be there. one or two creep tumors to prevent yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, the problem here is that all the action is taking place on Benbot BCs that are from the map. I don't think he's seen Candy Nana's the other side of the map in like you know, 10 minutes or so. Um, a big fight going on this PF. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure if we're on the same time. I'm at 2230. Yeah, 2235. Uh, so. Yeah, but his hydras are in each other's way, though. He has enough firepower to kill the planetary, but the oh, he's got it. He's hydras got it. are blocking each other. He's, got, he's going down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, I knew that was enough hydras that time for sure. Yeah, help, so help to not arrive. Yeah, so with that extra base being taken, um, yeah. I think Penny Nanas did it. Well, I mean, Bedbot BC's supply is dropping. Seriously. Yeah, I mean, Benbot is super rich, and he can certainly yeah. retake that base at some point. But even if he does, I still think he's in a tough spot, and yeah. it's not guaranteed he'll ever take it that base, because the, the pressure is not stopping from Penny Nana does, here. Does he have the production? Like, he's got the bank, but does he have the production to actually refill that supply? Yeah. So, so that's one base down for Cannon Nana. There's a chance this could be a blessing and surprise for Benbot. Because maybe this will force Cannon Nana to, like, just tr keep attacking into this triple siege tank area. Yeah. And get really, really bad efficiency doing that. Okay, here comes another giant wave from Kenny Nana here. Yeah. And he is fighting yeah. into the siege tanks. Like yeah, breaking that siege tank line is going to be very difficult. Yeah, so I mean, if he just keeps, keeps slamming into that <laughs> bunker wall fail, that was <laughs> probably something for Benbot, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it was really a bunker wall fail for uh, Kenny Nana there. <laughs> he loses, loses like 100 supply yeah. to that wall. <laughs> I think that's what uh, Kenny Nana was saying, or by Benbot BC was saying, but yeah. I think he was saying they lost his bunker, but <laughs> you know, the fail was more on Kenny Nana's yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It was well worth it. Oh, some Broodlords coming in there. Which, uh, oh, Broodlords is a whole nother deal. Yeah. That is something that uh, Widow Mines and Bunkers and Siege Tanks do not do well against. Yeah. So many Corruptors. You might actually be able to start killing VCs before they jump. I do like that the VCs are jumping earlier now. They're recognizing that they got to jump early because there's so many Corruptors, but actually VC does fall as I say that. Yeah, the Vikings are doing a good job of just keeping the uh, Broodlords at bay a little bit. Yeah, but how are they so many Corruptors here? Yeah. And these Broodlings are just de so deadly, it's causing these huge tanks to do friendly fire. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing a couple more Broodlords. He's just got more Corruptors than he needs, so... Yeah, so it would be nice just to have him pick away at these. So... But still attempting to retake that base, I don't think. Yeah. Not gonna happen, I'm afraid. He's scanning. He does get that, uh. Investor down. He's trying to retake that base. He's pushing that way. There's still lots of creep under that, so I need to clean out the creep first. Um, got a neural. Where's he gonna jump to? Jump back into your small forest. Goodbye. Hmm. Doesn't take that one. Out. 
so. Yeah, I think yes. Cannon Nana is almost done this. Yeah. I mean, there is such a huge bank there, but there's no income. Like, that's all he has. There's literally no income at all from uh, from Benbot BC apart from a tiny bit of the bomb. But even that's what he needs is Cannon Nana to just constantly throw his whole army at the front line and lose it time yeah. after time until he's broke. And then Benbot can go out and retake that forward base. Yeah. But in trying to retake it now, he's just kind of losing VCs, which it's not the way to get ahead economic or get ahead on units lost. I do love these Yamatos on the corruptors though. That's a really expensive loss every time a Yamato's a corruptor. Yamatoing infestors too to break the uh, neural parasite. It's kind of cool. Probably lucky because I don't think you know when a. Neural parasite is active. Um, I guess you can kind of guess yeah, based on guess the nearby. You got, you got some <laughs> but I don't think uh, there's anything on the infestor around. that tells yeah. you that it has using neural yeah. no parasite. Yeah, so I don't know where uh, where, kind of, where Benbot is actually mining from now. I don't think he's mining anything. Nah, he's running out of money. Yeah. You're right. He's got one mineral patch in his. Uh, 11 o'clock base, and that's it. He cannot repair these BCs anymore. Well, I, I, okay, no, he can, he can repair them. That bank is but not with 100 corruptors on them. <laughs> yeah. It looks like three of them will fall right away. And I think there's still enough to take out the rest. Yeah, there is. Yeah, that repair is Add to everything. effective. Okay, I kind of know I was almost done this. Like... Oh, he even mined out the, uh, the little path in the back door. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, yeah. That Beautiful. was what I was getting. What a series. Wow. That was a great one. Yeah. That might be the series of the tournament. This was, I think Kananana has done it. In the long, drawn out, like, battle of attrition, Kananana has proved, like, he's actually got a lot of, a lot of good tactics there. Yeah. Loving the BC stuff. Yeah. Anti BC stuff. That was like. Couldn't, couldn't code it any better than that, I don't think. No. Really smart corruptor usage on when to attack and when not to. Um, uses the BC as well as when he has them neural parasited, and then right before he runs out of neural parasite, he teleports them into a whole bunch <laughs> of spore crawlers. So, yeah, <laughs> literally perfect. Yeah, I can Love do it. Any better. We're seeing a uh, constant uh, evolution of the bots now. And, uh, yeah, just this one thing left. GG. Kanana will take the win. Ooh. Yeah, Very Kanye Nana's well author has got to be really happy that he he yes. picked Ben Bot. I don't think any any bot in the entire tournament shows up Kanye Nana better than yeah. facing Ben Bot. <laughs> Get to see everything he's capable of there. Yeah, uh, they were given a few days to uh, with full knowledge of the uh, of the seedings before the uh, submission deadline. So there was time to code some stuff in there. But very well done to uh, Hatosh and uh, Kanye Nana. Yeah, I'm gonna guess that he, that the BC code is probably already there. Because if I were him and I was going to code something specific for Benbot, I'd be dealing with that bunker rush a lot better <laughs> than what he did. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I think that's point. priority over dealing, being really cute to be with the uh, VCs yeah. there. <laughs> All right. Next... Yeah, well done by both bots. Great yeah. series. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, next up, it's two of our <laughs> oldest authors on the ladder, like two of the originals. These. Uh, these bots have been around a long time and still kicking it around with the best of them. We have Sharp yeah, and Ditch up against Tyr. Uh, Tyr has some bit of his Terran bot. Uh, he is capable of playing all races, but decides to uh, submit the Terran bot for this tournament. So uh, Yeah. Uh, he used to always be like, he could play all races, but he was a Protoss bot. Now, I think his yeah. best race is actually Terran. He's yeah, actually developed yeah. to be very strong. Yeah. Another one of... Uh, Another one defecting from our Protoss bros. No! <laughs> <laughs> and Sharp and Edge, I believe, has the record for longest duration of not being updated and still being able to qualify for tournaments. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, normally, crazy. when you compare bots today to two years ago, like, the two years ago bots cannot hold a, hold a flame, but uh, Sharp and Edge, which was so strong that it's still hanging in there and qualifying for tourneys. Yeah, and both these bots have lots of different builds with them as well. So uh, 
yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this turns out. Uh, I am ready when you are. Good to go. All right, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, up in the top left-hand corner of Moon Darts, it is Sharpened Edge. And the bottom right, we have the Blue Terran. It is Tear. So once again, we are on a map that has a little pocket base in the back, so it'll be interesting to see yeah. how and if the bots handle it. Again, like I say, two of the oldest bots, so I don't know how, how regularly they've been updated recently. I know tier has been working hard. And uh, Sharpen Edge, I think, still get a few updates um, occasionally. Yeah, do you know the story with tier? Is tier being worked on, and is it being worked on by tier? I think so. I heard yes. something about like someone else working on tier. Like, yeah, I'm is... not sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's uh, it's doing pretty well, and I th I know that definitely the uh, the Terran bot has been updated so reasonably recently. Yeah. Uh, as two ships pass in the night, or a SCV and a probe, I guess they're two ships. Uh, yeah, you can call them a ship. You can yeah, probably yeah. board a probe, I would guess, <laughs> <laughs> if you really wanted to. <laughs> and I'm not sure where this is. Do we have night and day? But, uh... Oh, That's a oh man. Place. Running away. Run away, run away. Regenerate. Yeah. I'm getting flashbacks to when I first joined the ladder, and Sharpened Edge was the one bot that does probe harass. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to lose like yeah. seven SCVs to this scout probe because I didn't have any counter code for it. I had oh. to start every game down seven SCVs. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but nice little build out of both of them so far. We got a gas barracks into an expand from tier. Meanwhile, we have, a, I believe, it was a cyber core into expand cyber for, core, yeah, yeah uh, for Sharpened Edge. So both. Doing a little safe standards. expansion yeah. build order. Yeah. Um, and, uh, sharp Edge keeping the probe alive, giving himself full knowledge of everything, even going down to check the pocket base. So. Yeah. Yep. Not gonna Second racks on the way for tier. Uh, not too much for Sharpened Edge yet. He is starting to stockpile a gas, though, so I'm guessing we're going to see a tech structure soon. Yep. So just the uh, one gateway so far as well. Oh, that pesky probe actually might get a kill. Oh, no. No, no. Yep, there it is. <laughs> oh, and delaying the uh, expand as well. Yeah, yeah, probably the most important SCV yeah. to kill. Yeah. And he actually pulled two SCVs to to rebuild it. So now he's got an idle SCV. The damage done by a single probe. Yeah. So a uh, robo facility on the way for uh, Sharp Pitch. Tech Colossus. And we have a th yeah, and a third Rax even out of tier now, which is interesting. Yep. Could be a big bio push. Because uh, no sign of a typical barracks factory starport. <laughs> Not seeing that opener here. So, yeah, I mean... Sharpened Edge says they're going to go into Colossus, which is going to be really good against a lot a big bio push. That is a, yeah, a unit you want in that case. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, cancel. I don't see a Robo Bay out yet, which you obviously need to build lots of Colossus. A couple more gateways coming down. Carpent <laughs> Edge is waiting at the ramp that is natural, and he's a little uh, confused on where the ramp is. <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. think there's any parents coming from that way. It's like, <laughs> watch, watch the base, guys. There's nothing coming in over here. Oh, God. That's going to be. Hey, I understand. Here. If there's a ramp at your natural, you would think that would be where you yeah. want to defend. But, uh... <laughs> oh, there's a couple, of, uh, a couple of Marines on the way over. Marine versus Stalker is pretty good for Stalker. Uh, yeah, but there's three Marauders in the fight in the composition as well, and he's gonna have Stim and Combat Shield. Yeah, They're finishing is... at a similar time. I wonder if he's gonna make this a timing attack. Yeah. I would like to see him starting to move out now. Oh, there we go. I, he almost <laughs> moved out. He's just getting out of the way of the fourth barracks. Ah, okay, yeah. 
So this is like a mass barracks play. Oh, there's a factory. Okay, so the tech is super light, but on its way. Yep. I'm guessing that's going to be eventually for medevacs. Yeah. Still don't see the red right bay here for Tia. As you, I say it, he puts one down. Yeah. Yeah, quite late. I mean, this stim time, he could hit at any moment. If, uh... Hero chooses to. And you probably want to have, like, three Colossus with range, if to do really well versus Bio. So, we're a long ways away from that being true. Yeah, a couple of them are normally pretty good. Um, but if you've got enough front line for it, it can certainly do some damage. Uh, tech lab on the factory. Siege tanks are actually be really strong as well. They do well against the Colossus, even. So, yeah. yeah. So it wasn't for Medivacs. I thought with all these barracks, he'd be rushing the Medivacs with that factory, but now it's just adding siege tanks. So, yeah, we got and it's actually going to be it's Sharpened Edge is the one attacking. Oh no! Not advisable. This is not a good idea, Sharpened Edge. Slow zealots going to be okay. Retreat. That's, good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It's a good retreat, but you certainly lost only two stalkers and two zealots, so that's yeah. not the end of the world. Yeah, a lot of hit points actually off of these stalkers as well, but that'll be permanent damage. But um, I'm glad to see he didn't commit to that. See, he was going to get slaughtered. Yeah, so and honestly, he forced a stim, and there's no medevacs, so yeah. <laughs> that's that's a decent amount of bad, return damage. Yeah. yeah, you don't think of a single stim as being damaged, but that's like 300. That's like landing a storm on the bio almost. Yeah. <laughs> it's like 300 damage across the board. So we do have a Colossus on the way. Colossus range is also on the way. It's a very big ball of bio. Yep, third base is down for tier. Uh, so I'd say at this point I kind of like it for a sharpened edge. Yeah. He took a bad fight, but I think he's gotten where he wants to tech-wise. He's had the third base up longer. And as long as his upgrades and everything's looking good, which... Oh, uh, he's about to be 1 0 against yeah. 1 0. So he's a little behind bad. on upgrades, actually. Oh, I think these are going to fight yeah, another without bad the attack. Colossus. That's the bad attack without the Colossus yeah. there. Oh, no. Pre siege tanks as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay, another bad fight for mm -hmm. <laughs> Sharpened Edge. It's not helping, my prediction. But uh, just 11 Zealots and two Stalkers. Again, not the end of the world, but please stop doing that if you yeah. want to win this. <laughs> It's, it's not a good tactic. Down. So another, um, another Colossus on the way. Oh, and another Colossus coming down, sorry. And also the Immortal on the way. So... I think Sharp and they... he... Yeah, Sharp just needs to wait and, and wait for the big attack. And then try and take it out, I think. Yeah. He did just run a phoenix into that army, so hopefully he realizes that it's too big for him to attack again. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, he did force another stim, and we do still don't have any medevacs on the field, so... Yeah. So... Losing 11 zealots for two stims is not horrifically bad. <laughs> yeah, although we do have a bit of a staring match. Now we see... Is this a move out from Tia? It's something. Is yeah. he making space to build a... I think so. Yeah, I, I I know what that code is. That's I'm trying to move out, but I'm not I'm not allowed to get too far away from my own siege tanks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have that code with mine as well. Yeah, yeah. So the range are just refuse to attack because oh the siege tanks are too far away. I can't go there. <laughs> I do like the setup from Sharpened Edge here. He's got the uh, uh, he's got a few zealots and some colossus. Yeah. Um, there's some force fields there as well, uh, so we see it coming in. Uh, this bio is just getting it demolished by those Colossus. Oh, that is not a good fight for uh, Tia. Everything yeah. is getting taken out. Yeah, perfect timing on the upgrade. Charge yeah. is already done as well, which has worked out really well for him. Yeah. Colossus. And I don't believe the tanks were focus firing the Stalkers, which meant uh, the Siege tanks were actually doing a lot of friendly fire damage when they hit the Zealots. Yeah, the Zealots absolutely... Uh, the, um, the Colossus were absolutely demolishing everything, though. And they're going to continue to demolish everything here. And 
Sean Nash might just carry on and win this. Yeah, he has the capability of doing that. Let's see if he actually pushes his victory or not. Even the fourth base alone is a giant victory. But uh, if he just keeps going, which I think he is, he will probably yeah. close this out. Well, there's no reverse gear here. Why does he even use his disruptors? I didn't even know he knew about that unit. Yeah. Oh, what are you doing? Oh, no, don't use disruptors. Please, don't use disruptors. <laughs> He blew up all his own stalkers. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Disruptor bellows are not like a friendly buff. That's Aww. not how you use those <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a very sad ending, wouldn't it? Because I don't think Sharpened Edge uses uh, shield batteries, because it kind of dates back before shield batteries were a thing. Yeah. Okay, he oh, just no, blew up his own stalkers again. So, tier to see to stay alive long enough for these the disruptor yeah. cooldown to cancel a few <laughs> more times. <laughs> Wait for the opponent. He's got a secret yeah. ally on <laughs> right, I'm going to fast forward this field. anyway, because I think this is uh, a nice win for Sharp and Bench. This is the uh, first game in the series. Disruptor uh, says zero kills, but uh, that's an inaccurate stat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it counts uh, friendly fire kills in your kills. No, it, it, does not. Uh, <laughs> it definitely would not be zero if that were the case. <laughs> it should it would be do. more like ten. <laughs> it really should do. Yeah. And uh, yeah, let's have a look at uh, game two in the Battle of the Veterans. Cool. But yeah. Uh, here, really, like both of those bots were just wanting to the the opponent to attack them, and uh, unfortunately, once we had all of the uh, all of the Colossus up and ready, uh, Sharpeners just had a little bit of an edge. Yeah, I mean, if the attack went the other direction and those Colossus attacked into pre-siege tanks, and, you know, and if the army came in like a line, like it does sometimes, that fight could have gone completely the other way. Yeah, but uh, but the fight starting with bio versus um, colossi yeah. and the tanks have to siege up during the fight. Yeah, that's a it's totally it's different. The rest of the disaster. All right, I am ready with game two. When you are. Yep, just loading it up as we speak. Cool. I still think I like Tier to take this series. I think I liked yeah. more things I saw going on with Tier there. Yeah, it just needs to get the right timing on the attacks, and then. Everything is good, I think. Yeah. Cool. All right, I'm all ready to go. All right, going. Oh, one sec. All right. all right, going in three, two, one, go. Okay, up in top left, it is our red Protoss. It is sharp and edge. And spawning in the bottom right, we have the blue Terran tier. On match point, he needs to stay, win this to stay alive. Yep. Well, for the series, I should for, say. For the series, yeah. 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 It's, uh, every, all of our bots will get at least three matches in this tournament. And to prove their worth. Point hazard. That's, yeah. <laughs> Be careful of knives out there. All right, so no pocket base this time. So the third base will provide more resources, but be more exposed. That could uh, offer a different dynamic. Yeah. If we're seeing the same thing out of these bots, tier might switch it up as it didn't go too well for them last time. Yeah, I think definitely if uh, Sharpened Edge at least was funneled into that main choke point. So possibly if, uh, if there is a third base, that might even go better for Sharpened Edge. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, opening, really, from yeah, so far, looking the same out of both bots. I think we're going to see a Cybercore before Nexus, and we did see a Gas Barracks opener again out of tier. And this uh, probe is going to prove a real, uh, real nuisance. Yep. Probably something good for all Protoss bots to do. Yeah. Because most bot authors defend Probe Ras by chasing it with a worker, which is not ideal. It makes it easy, yeah. <laughs> but that means you have one less worker, and then yeah. it's kind of making the... It's a one-for-one -one trade, but you get the extra scouting information. Yeah, yeah. 
a human player would know that they can mine most of the time and there's only certain times they need to pull off to deal with the probe. All right, command center down for or second base down for both players. Yep. Uh, we're gonna see tech players out of shelf and don't you? I wonder. Another. I think we had a, a weird thing there that two probes were sent to build the same at the same place. Yeah. <laughs> the shield battery is a. Yeah. It's Interesting choice. One. Yeah, not, <laughs> yeah. not something I'd expect to see there. Unless there's something like uh, one of the bots is coming over that area a lot. Even then, shield battery is a strange choice this early, I think. Maybe in some matchup, those, those structures are built at the ramp, like the Cybercorn gateway, and then it would make more sense to have the shield battery nearby as well. Yeah. So, three racks out of um, tier. Build air macro. Interesting. So he's going to maybe open some Void Rays or Phoenix. Let's see. Maybe an Oracle that does nothing, which is a <laughs> staple of Protoss bots. <laughs> Although Sharkbot is finally putting an end to that with some yeah. strong Oracle usage. Yeah. There is the uh, Stargate coming out, so we'll see. I don't know though about Stargate play and what doesn't work against well versus heavy bio play. No. It works well versus like factory and starport units, but not so much versus just like a whole bunch of marines. <laughs> yeah, you, you've not got much that, you, that stim marines can't deal with there. You can get void arrays will be very, very uh, much slaughtered by a few stim marines coming at them. But again, um, no medivacs out of tier, so stim is almost permanent. Yeah, and we did even see Vikings later than the game out of tier last time, so you'll be well set up to deal with air units. A couple of Marines going out just to keep an eye on the third bases, I like that. Since there's no pocket base, these might actually delay the third base at a sharpened edge this time. And as I say that, sharpened edge looks like he's looking to clear the third base, which is kind of do. Very nice. Yep. Uh, okay, there you go. Oracle coming out, which is seen by the Marine. All right, this Oracle, I guess on average, will get 0.1 kills. Let's see if it can be on the high end of that and get one kill. If they... Here we go. Oh, no, just oh. turned it on, turned it off. Awesome. <laughs> there <laughs> we go, Oracle. we got one. Oh, you got it. All right. Yeah. Yay. One kill. Got two, even. Two? There we go. Well, able to get and away? it got away, yeah. Oh, my God. That's a, that's a well worth it, Oracle. Oh my gosh. I don't know what to say. <laughs> that might be the best sharp mid edge oracle we've ever seen. Yeah, and we've got a void ray on the way as well. And he even got SCVs that are building structures. So they both yeah. cast geysers by a few seconds. That's cool. As we see a few marines coming across the map for Tia. That oracle just shot his own Stargate. That's <laughs> weird. He's like, I did too well. I'm going to leave the <laughs> beam on and shoot my own Stargate. Yeah, you got to uh, Big fight going on here. Yep. Uh, this Guardian Shield doing a lot of work for the Stalkers, but uh, that will end up being a net loss for the Stalkers. They do not have Blink this time as he opens Stargate. Yeah, I'll only say that. He's going to chase these uh, Marines all the way back. Yeah, Marines decided to leave. I would have liked them to stay and stim a second time. I think they could have won that fight or at least traded well. But in running home, they're gonna lose five or six of them yeah. to the superior range. These stalkers. Oh, okay, another stim. That this could be good if he focuses oh, the void ray. Is gonna survive? No. Does. No. But now it's six stalkers versus nothing. Yeah. Sharpen Edge might have done this. Marauder comes out, dies quickly. This is not looking good for Tia right now. Sharpen Edge Double stims, that's not good. Sharpen Edge doesn't really have code to retreat. It's like. At this point, it's just okay. Everything all in. I've broken the line. Yeah, and that's what he should be doing. Like he has a huge army to lead. Yeah, stay there. Yeah, definitely. Like we saw last game when he walked into something that wasn't smart, he got the heck out of there. So. Yeah, the world is being targeted there. Yeah, I mean, he does have the reinforcement advantage. 
down to five stalkers now. Yeah. Let's see if this Viking can kite the Void Ray. No, it's just gonna die to the Void Ray. Thanks. Uh, I think High I... ground advantage, these stalkers cannot shoot back. Yeah, the only thing shooting this uh, command center is the sentry, so it might take a while for that command center to go down. But yeah. Tier does lose his third, however, and Sharpened Edge just taking a fourth base, so. Oh, and he <laughs> hallucinated Archon, tricking uh, nice. Tier as well, just insult to injury. Yeah, I think Sharpened Edge has got the yeah. sweep here, and I don't see how he's going to come back from this. He does have a little bit of high ground advantage, but now the Void Ray's there to give vision, so not much of an advantage at all. Yeah. Uh, okay, here is that just uh, 46 supply. This is not looking good. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna oh, I'm fast forward this. Oh my gosh, even the Oracle is getting more kills. <laughs> Wow. Six kill Oracle, my goodness. There we go, that's it's the biggest Oracle. Oracle we've ever had. <laughs> Seven right. kills. Uh, fast forward this GG, guys. Uh, Sharp and Edge will take the, uh, the sweep. Yeah, great first day to this tournament. Yeah. Nice uh, nice. We, it was a little sketchy with the first couple series, <laughs> but uh, then we had a, a couple, yeah, we had uh, couple bangers ones. after that. But yeah, yeah Sharp and Edge against here was one I was really looking forward to as well. and. Uh, yeah, looks like Sharpened Edge, uh, brilliant start to the tournament. So, yeah, that's our uh, first day. All done. Um, I will uh, show you the bracket uh, once we finish week two. Um, so, yeah, um, so wins this week for Eris, uh, Sharkbot, Benbot, B uh, Caddy Nana. And Sharp Edge, yeah. yeah. Canada taking a brilliant macro uh, victory over Benbot BC. Um, I think yeah. we would consider those last two series upsets as well, I would say. Uh, I think Benbot and Tier are probably the favorites. Yeah, Canada, like, definitely Benbot BC was a favorite. Like, Sharp and Edge and Tier, I think, kind of on the same level. I wouldn't be entirely shocked to see one beat the other or, or it go either way. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's a really good series. But, yeah, so... Yeah. We're going to come back next week with the uh, the final um, part of this first round, which will be Micro Machine up against Nikolai, uh, Ketrock up against Smoothbrain. New entry to the tournament. Looking forward to seeing Smoothbrain in action. Um, should be a fun one. Uh, yeah. Sozo up against Octopus. Sozo, our returning favourite. Um, <laughs> And our last match uh, will be of this round will be uh, Dominion Dog up against Xena. Um, Are we going to see uh, Sharkbot against Zozo? Okay. Is that a thing? It's possibly. <laughs> Entirely possible. Quasi Pro Brush versus Quasi Pro Brush? <laughs> That'll be That'd be a thing. lot of fun. Can't wait for that one. Anyway, um, yeah, we are all about done for tonight. Um, thank you very much, Ketrock, for joining us. Thanks, everyone else, for watching. Um, yeah. We'll be back same time next Sunday. Um, only doing uh, one cast a week for this tournament because uh, doing two casts a week was almost killing me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> might, might so it'll be a... eight weeks. Yeah. But uh, yeah, every Sunday except eight. for that one week will be Monday. Yeah. Right? Well, unless someone else wants to take over the stream for that weekend, but we'll see. Yeah, that's an option too. Yeah. It should be fun. Uh, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Catch you later. See you guys.